how much of my IQ can be attributed to my genes? Now, for any one individual, this question is unanswerable. We can really only talk about heritability of IQ, which answers a slightly different question. How well can people's IQ differences be predicted by their genetic differences? For our purposes, behavioral genetics comes down to the question of how our DNA influences our psychology. You'll hear debates over nature versus nurture or genes versus environment. However, any attempt to arrive at a clean dichotomy between the forces of nature and nurture will obscure the truth about the roles of our genes and our environments. The truth is that they're dynamically interactive. Our genes influence how the environment treats us, and our environments influence how our genes work. And the relative influence of genetics and environment can never be known for any single behavior of any single individual. Behavioral geneticists use measures of variance to estimate the impact of genetic inheritance. The heritability coefficient is a number that is a mathematical expression of a proportion or fraction of variance. For the heritability coefficient, the numerator of the fraction is variance in behavior. The denominator is variance in genetic makeup. So the heritability coefficient answers the very specific question, how much of the difference that people show in this behavior can be explained by differences in genetics? Notice that this question does not address the behavior of any individual person. We're talking about variance, so we're talking about differences between people. Each tiny piece of data contains two numbers and is derived from two people. Two people differ in the behavior and they differ in the genes. We record that pair and we observe another pair of people and then another and another and so on. And at the end of the day, we have an estimate of how the magnitude of the difference in behavior is related to the magnitude of the difference in the genes. Well, let's take a look at a couple of idealized graphs to illustrate the point. We've laid out the relationships between two variables. Along the x-axis, we have magnitude of difference in genetics, and along the y-axis, we have magnitude of difference in behavior. We usually measure the difference in genetics through difference in alleles at selected points in the genome. We can put any behavior we choose on the y-axis, but just for fun, let's use artistic talent. In order to get the points on the graph, we need to measure differences in each variable. So each point on the graph actually represents two people and displays their difference in genetics and difference in artistic talent. In the idealized graph, I've made two circles. The one at the lower left might represent my brother and me. We don't differ very much on genetics because we're low on the x-axis, and we don't differ much in our artistic talent, which is why we're low on the y-axis. The upper circle might represent a perfect stranger in me, we would be maximally different in our genetics, being high on the x-axis, and maximally different in our artistic talent, being high on the y-axis. A graph like this indicates a large degree of heritability. Again, just to remind you, it's an idealized graph, and it's not real data. Now, note that the x-axis says nothing about the actual magnitude of genes, only the difference, and the same for the y-axis. So my brother and I might both be very bad artists, but we might both be very good artists. The graph simply indicates that we don't differ much wherever we are. So here's a graph that's fundamentally impossible. This graph represents the magnitude of genes and a magnitude of artistic talent for individual cases. So each dot is a single person instead of a pair. This is the data you would need to have in order to answer our original question about the power of genes for any individual. However, these data are impossible to acquire. We all have the same number of genes or magnitude of genetic material, so there's no way to gather information on a range of the x-axis. It's possible to measure the differences between people, but it's impossible to measure the amount of genes in any single individual so we cannot use heritability to answer a question about the individual. Knowing how genetic differences predict behavioral differences is a wonderful endeavor, even for things as controversial as IQ. We run into serious trouble when the legitimate data on prediction are twisted into unsupported claims about causation.